Hello, welcome to Law Excellence. In this video, we are going to discuss about EVM and VVPAT. What are these two? How they are used? What are the issues associated with them? In the recent days, you might have observed there is huge controversy with regard to VVPATs and EVMs. So in that context, let us understand some of the frequently asked questions with regard to both of them. Before that, let us watch a small video. Hello, I am Electronic Voting Machine. Everyone simply calls me EVM. And I am VVPAT. I print the vote and store it. I make the world's largest democratic electoral process secure, free and transparent. I am a tamper-proof machine. I am made of a one-time programmable chip that cannot be accessed or connected to any external device or network. Thus, I cannot be corrupted or be modified in any way possible. I am allotted to the polling booths through an elaborate randomization process. So, nobody would know which unit goes to which polling booth almost until the polling date. I undergo mock polls at every stage to ensure that I am in the right working condition. That is why I am a trustworthy machine, EVM. So, did you understand? EVMs are trustworthy. That's what Election Commission of India says. That's what we have observed through our experience. Now, let us understand few more issues with regard to EVMs. Before discussing issues related to EVMs and VVPATs, first let us understand how to cast a vote upon entering a polling booth. What is the process? There are four important steps. First of all, upon entering the polling booth, the presiding officer who sits there, he presses a button in the controlling unit. It means EVM has two units. One is controlling unit which will be with the presiding officer and the other unit is known as ballot unit. This ballot unit is kept in this particular kind of compartment where we move here and vote. So, this will be with the presiding officer, the control unit where all the information is stored. Information storage, this access is with the presiding officer, the ballot unit, this is known as C unit. Ballot unit is known as B unit. B unit is kept in this particular compartment. Then we see for the serial number, name of the candidate and the symbol and presses the blue button. Immediately the red light over here, it glows and a beep sound comes. So we get to know that our vote got cast. Then immediately after that, this is the VVPAT machine. Here on the screen, a paper showing the serial number, name of the candidate and the symbol. These three would be printed and it gets displayed for 7 seconds. Then the paper splits and kept in this particular box. That is the process. Now let us see the details with regard to EVMs and VVPATs. The first question is, what is an EVM? What is it? It is an electronic device. What is the purpose of it? It records the votes in the place of conventional paper ballot system. Then what was the earlier system? How was it used? Why we moved to EVMs? These are the questions. What was the earlier system followed? In the first Lok Sabha general elections, we have kept different ballot boxes for each of the candidates. For example, this is, let's say, this is INC, Indian National Congress, separate ballot, another party, separate ballot, another party, separate ballot. Likewise, for all the contesting candidates, a separate box was maintained at that particular time. So, if this person wants to vote for INC, he keeps this slip in this particular ballot box. But in general, we should have one box where everyone casts the vote and finally counting would be done. But why was this followed in the first general election? What might be the logic? Think on that and comment it in the comment section. Slowly we move to the single ballot box where on a voter slip all the serial numbers, candidate name, symbol would be printed and then 
people goes in and stamps on the required or on the chosen particular party symbol then they fold this and then they keep it in this particular box that was the earlier system first of all this and then move to single box now later we move to evms why what is the necessity to move to evm from the conventional paper ballot why evms became necessity it is because for counting the pa ballot papers it used to take lot of time long hours of time spanning number of days and then the counting officials were working in a charged atmosphere the contesting candidate sometimes used to ask for recounting again it's a huge task invalid votes was one of the things invalid vote means let's say this is the ballot paper candidate 1 candidate 2 3 4 something like that then the name and symbol if the person let's say stamps here then to whom the vote goes such votes were called invalid votes so there were huge number of invalid votes sometimes pouring ink in this ballot box was common thing so these were all the problems again as this counting takes for long days they used to deploy huge number of security forces so this was all problematic so we wanted to find an alternative that's why we moved to evms why what are the advantages of evms over the conventional system first of all it eliminates the invalid and doubtful votes here we are not stamping anything we are exactly pressing to whom we want to vote so invalid votes doubtful votes would be eliminated then counting becomes very easy over here at the press of a button we get to know what are the old votes polled to which candidate how many votes polled etc so it is very speedy and it is less controversial and quantity of the paper that gets used in the election that reduces substantially because every voter gets a paper in the conventional system but here nothing like that so it is eco friendly then cost of printing would be very very less initially to procure evms yes it is costly but once the procurement is done later in the later stages it is very cost effective because of all these advantages we have moved from traditional ballot system to evm system then what are the unique features of indian evms because evm kind of systems are used by many countries in the world but what are the specific or unique features of indian evms first of all we have many illiterate people in india and then the system should be simple for them to understand so evms are designed in a very simple way these are easy to be operated by both the polling personnel as well as the voters so that is the first feature second one is it is sturdy enough to withstand rough handling and varied climatic conditions in india if you see there are regions with sub sub temperature sub zero temperatures there are high temperature zones there are rainy zones there are desert regions so all kind of climatic zones exist in india so these are designed to withstand all kind of climatic conditions then these are stand alone machines without any network connectivity you might have understood by the initial video played in this particular video so it, it these are stand alone machines no bluetooth no wifi nothing can be connected so once the programming is done no interference next thing there are erratic power supply positions in india there are remote regions where power supply is not available there are regions where power supply is not continuous so instead of running these machines on power we are running them on batteries so we can use them anywhere at any point of time as we know evms have two units ballot unit control unit what are the specific features of control unit control unit this unit is the main unit that controls the entire functioning of evm it has one time programmable chip it means if once the data or programming is done in that particular chip it can't be altered and it uses dynamic coding to enhance the security it also has 
clock, real time clock and date time stamping. So whenever there is doubt, so exact time, exact date, everything would be known by accessing the data on it. And once the voting is completed, once the close button is pressed, it will not accept any data or record any votes. And then by pressing total button, we will easily get to know what are the number of votes recorded against each person, each candidate. Then the display system of control unit shows the total number of votes polled. Then we can verify it based on the number of voters, based on the number of voters who have come there and voted. This control unit also detects any physical tampering made to the cable which connects the ballot unit and the control unit. These are the specific features of control unit. Before introducing EVMs, whether ECI consulted the technical experts because there is huge criticism now for introducing EVMs? Yes, before in introducing the EVMs, it has consulted a technical group. This technical committee examined the machines minutely from all the technical angles and they have recommended it for the elections. Then what about political parties? Did it consult the political parties before introducing? Yes, ECA has consulted all the political parties and it has demonstrated before them. They have also agreed for it. But now many parties accuse EVMs for their less votes. Then who manufactures EVMs in India? There are only two central government undertakings. One is BEL Bharat Electronics Limited and ECIL Electronics Corporation of India Limited. These are the only two manufacturers of the EVMs. Then when was it introduced? It was first introduced in 1982 itself in the by-elections in Kerala. Do we need electricity for using them? No. EVMs doesn't depend on electricity. It runs on batteries. What is the maximum number of votes which can be cast in a particular EVM? Maximum 3840 votes. Earlier, the earlier version of EVM supported 2000 votes. Now the advanced versions, they support 3840 votes. But in general, a polling booth has less than 1,400 voters. But in case if more number of people are there, more number of voters are there, then also EVM support the maximum number of votes polled can be 3,840. The next question is, what is the maximum number of candidates which EVM can cater to? EVM, as we know, consists of a control unit and ballot unit. On a ballot unit, we have 16 names, in general 15 names and one nota. This is the process. So, if the number of candidates that are contesting are more than 16, one more ballot unit would be added to this particular control unit only. So, likewise, we can connect more number of ballot units. The maximum number of candidates that can be catered to using this EVM is 64. But now, the advanced versions of EVMs can cater to 384 candidates. It means we can connect more number of ballot units like this to the same single control unit. Earlier, this was the thing. When the number of contesting candidates goes beyond 64, Election Commission of India used to conduct the vote by using the conventional system of ballot paper system. But now, as we have advanced version which can support 384 candidates, we won't be using this. We will be going for the advanced EVMs where we connect more number of multiple number of ballot systems to the same single control unit. Now, let's say a illiterate voter is there. How will the person know what are the steps? Then, who should help him or whose help should he take? That's the question. If you see, our voting system is a secret ballot system. Means, when the person is casting the vote, no one is allowed to see to which party or to which candidate he is voting. So, 
then if the person is illiterate who helps him that's the question the presiding officer of that particular polling booth will have a demo piece with him or her then he or she shows how to cast the vote then this person goes here to the polling chamber and votes but this presiding officer is not allowed to enter with him or her to this particular polling chamber because secrecy voting secrecy is maintained what are the other countries that use evms in elections bhutan used our own indian evms for the whole country during their last elections nepal also used indian evms in some of their constituencies the next question is can anybody tamper with the evms here utmost care is taken while programming the microprocessors once they are made they cannot be overwritten the programming can't be overwritten and they are stored in a strong rooms whoever wants to enter into that room they'll have to follow a stringent procedure so security and transparency is maintained with regard to evms so it is very very difficult to tamper with the evm systems then one can ask this question you are saying it's a one time programmable chip so what if if some party some candidates program the chip itself initially that will not happen because see on this ballot system the names are printed based on the alphabetical order so before this nomination and finalization of names no one would know who will come in which serial number so if they want to tamper let's say if the person feels he will be in the third place then we we can argue that okay the chips are tampered and they have made these chips to poll more votes for serial number 3 but the person should know whether he comes in serial number 3 or 4 or 1 we will not know before this nomination before finalization of these names that's how tampering is not possible here you might have heard about this word evm randomization what is it what is evm randomization it means allocation of evms is randomized in a district and in a constituency once the evms are allotted to a district we will not know which evms are for which constituency which polling booth so this also made the evms tamper proof let's say on the polling day evm develops a problem then what is the remedy there will be an alternative or spare evm that will be installed whatever votes that were polled earlier they will also be taken into account they will also be counted once the polling is done where the evms are kept they are kept in a secure storage room where the representatives candidates they'll have access to keep a watch here generally counting is also done earlier with the conventional system one of the problems is booth capturing what does this mean people belong to a particular candidate or some contestant comes forcefully and then they stuff the ballot box with the ballot papers that used to happen so once the mixing is done it becomes very difficult to identify what are the freshly added ones and what are the already polled ones that was one of the biggest problems but now with the evm that problem can be addressed substantially because evm machine cannot register more than 5 votes in a minute and 300 votes in a hour that's one of the limitations plus the presiding officer can press the close button available in the control unit because control unit is with the presiding officer that way evms are much helpful as compared to the traditional system if there is simultaneous election in a state both for the parliament that is lok sabha election and for state legislative assembly can evms be used for the simultaneous election yes simultaneously if there is parliamentary election and state legislative election two evms are kept separate evms one for lok sabha election one for the state legislative assembly election this can be done
The next question is, for how long the control unit stores the result of in the memory? It stores it permanently until we intentionally clear it. If we remove battery, that doesn't clear any memory in it. Intentionally, by following a certain procedure, its memory can be cleared. So, even if someone wants to clear off the memory by removing battery or so, they cannot do it. Then, let's say the display unit in the control unit. The display of this control unit is not working. Then, how do we count? There is this auxiliary unit beside this control unit. This is known as ADU, auxiliary display unit. Even if the display is not working on this control unit, from this we can retrieve the data and see the display. Next, let's say a person is allowed to vote. He entered into the polling booth and the polling chamber. Then he, can he press the button again and again and vote more than once? No, because it's not in the ballot unit, but the control unit has the full control. The control unit would be with presiding officer. Before this person entering into this chamber, presiding you officer presses a button. Then only he or she can vote. So once this button is pressed, it will stay for some time. This person can cast the vote only once. Again, if another person goes there, then only he presses her, he or she presses this button. That's how more than once no one can vote. Then there is a question. See, earlier when we were using ballot papers, we used to mix all the ba ballot papers of a particular constituency at one place so that voter preference of a particular polling station is not known. But how can we do it with the EVM? That's the question. For that, Election Commission of India has introduced a machine known as Totalizer Machine. To which this is the Totalizer Machine? For this mission, all the control units can be connected of a particular constituency and at a time, all the votes of a single candidate, candidate A, B, C, D, like that, votes polled for him, her, him, like that, can be displayed and all the votes polled in a particular polling booth. Poll, let's say polling booth 1, 1,000 votes, polling booth 2, 2,000 votes, something like that. This will be shown and individual candidates' votes are shown, then final constituency level votes are shown. This is how voter preference of a particular police station is not known using the totalizer machine. Next question is, Election Commission of India says, Elections, Indian elections are all accessible, accessible to every person. But then, let's say a person is physically infirm, he can't walk then how the election is conducted let's say a person is blind how they how he or she can vote that's the question if a person is physically challenged a companion another person can accompany him another person here means the person whom is related to the physically challenged person or if a blind person is there braille signature braille language in braille language Ballot units indicate the serial number of the candidate. Based on that, they can vote. That's how Election Commission of India is making elections accessible to all. With this, we have completed almost all the frequently asked questions with regard to EVMs. If you have any further questions, please let us know it by commenting it in the comment section. Practice questions on EVMs are given at the end of this video. Please try to practice them. Now let us move on to VVPATs. What is VVPAT? To understand that, first we should understand voting is process of trust. The person should trust the system, should trust his or her vote is casted properly. If we are using EVM, this is the electronic device. So we will not see any of the proof for our vote to this particular candidate only. Earlier, when we were using the paper ballot, we used to stamp against this particular candidate's name and symbol. So the voter gets to know, yes, I have voted only for this. But then here, yes, 
he is he or she is pressing this button but where is the proof that his vote is getting casted only to this candidate that kind of trust and proofing is not there when we are using evm so to increase the trust among the people this new device known as vvpat voter verifiable paper audit trial is introduced in the year 2013 in few constituencies later now we are using it for all the direct elections here what happens when we press a particular button for any voting any candidate the candidate's serial number name and the symbol gets printed on a paper and that can be visible through this transparent window for few seconds and this slip gets cut and deposited in this particular box see this is the thing when a vote, vote get cast a slip is printed containing the serial number name and symbol of the candidate now does vvpat require any electricity no vvpat like the evm requires only battery not electricity let's say in a constituency only 10 candidates are contesting but on our ballot system we have 16 buttons yes or no last one is nota 16 let's say only 10 names are printed the 11th 12th slot these are empty can i press 11 or 12 will this vote get registered no when we have only 10 persons from 11th to 16 or from 11th to 15 these are sealed we cannot vote against these numbers now let's say we have chosen a particular candidate and pressed a particular button but then the name and symbol of the candidate that got printed on this paper slip in vvpat is different let's say an elector or the voter sees this what is the process now that's the question if an elector says the paper slip that got generated has shown the name and symbol of different candidate then he can inform the presiding officer then the presiding officer asks him to write a written declaration from the elector and then after taking this written declaration this elector is allowed to record a test vote test vote in the voting machine in the presence of the candidates or the polling agents polling agents of different parties then if the allegation is true then presiding officer immediately reports it to returning officer and he stops further voting however if the allegation is false then this presiding officer writes down that yes there is a second entry made by this person with the serial number name of the candidate etc so on the counting day this test vote would be removed okay the entire polling process is done now what follows it counting of the votes evm votes are counted the question is yes vvpat paper slips are generated right so are they counted how many of them are counted when they are counted these are all the questions vvpat votes are counted in three circumstances one there is a mandatory verification process for the direct elections in case of assembly constituency from one selected polling station vvpat votes and the evm votes are tallied second in each assembly segment if it is for lok sabha in each assembly segment from one single polling station VVPAT votes are counted this is the first mandatory verification of VVPATs this is done here only the controversy the opposition parties are asking that not in one single polling station at least in 50% of the polling stations you should tally VVPATs with EVMs but election commission says it takes a lot of time why is it required anyways EVMs are tamper proof next second case in case if the candidate or his election agent asks the returning officer to verify the evm votes on vvpat saying that we have some kind of doubt so please verify then returning officer has the discretion to verify it or not that is the second case the third case is that let's say entire voting process is done but then evm is not working during the counting 
so we are unable to retrieve the information from the evm machine then we have this alternative so we go for vvpat slip counting this is the last case these are the three ways under which vvpat votes are counted the last question in this video is when was the first time vvpat votes or vvpats are used in nagaland by election in the year 2013 vvpats are used here are the practice questions this question is about evms this is about vvpat slips this is also about vvpat system this is about combination of evms and vvpats please try to answer them in the comment section thank you very much